what is going on what's going on what's going on what's going on welcome to the way up network it is your girl ashley as it always is and this is another episode of way up weekly vibes where we gather around once a week and talk about the energy that is ahead so that we can make the most the most what <laughs> what i don't know where that came from <laughs> I don't even know what it is. <laughs> the most of it. I got kind of sidetracked. I keep seeing 53 everywhere. I don't look. I know it's an eight year. That energy of eight is coming through strong. Um, and I just keep seeing 53 and 35 everywhere. So maybe y'all are feeling that as well or seeing that as well. Or maybe it's just personal to me. I don't know what's going on, but that eight energy is strong here this year. And, uh, this week we're going to start really getting a taste of what that, uh, <laughs> we're going to start getting a taste of what that feels like. I mean, I guess, right. All your senses, um, hold that thought. Oh my gosh. Bless me. Bless me. <laughs> I'm fucking all over the place. I mean, this energy, Aquarius season, y'all, if y'all have been here for a minute, you probably have heard me say this. Maybe you haven't, whatever. Um, Aquarius season is my season for uh, downloads, revelations, upgrades, truth, clarity. Like it's my personal season for all of these kind of energies. And I'm honestly starting to think now, this is a conspiracy, but walk with me. I'm starting to think that your rising sign has everything to do, your rising sign. So like if you're, you know, a fucking Aquarius rising like me, right? then your kind of awakening season or leveling up season or upgrade season or download season, whatever is going on, like evolution wise <laughs> in your life happens during that season. Now it's just a conspiracy. It's just a thought, but I don't believe in coincidences. And if I'm always having these like upgrades and awakenings in Aquarius season and I'm an Aquarius rising, then maybe that's the case. And isn't that what isn't that what science is all about? So let's do a science experiment. You tell me um, if you experience any of those energies during your rising signs season. Let me know. Let me know. Or we'll do a collective science experiment. But I've been all over the place because of that. It's been whew, baby. Oh, baby. <laughs> it's it's been wild. Mm, it's been wild and it's just really like I've been really having to sit with myself and not like TMI right but I've been really having to like sit with myself and really like touch old feelings and emotions that I didn't even realize wasn't even conscious of that I was kind of like avoiding not necessarily looking at right and when you're not aware of certain energies that you're repressing or like not wanting to touch because your ego is trying to keep you safe and it's kind of like men in black erasing that shit from your memory it only comes up you only become aware of it when it comes up and you're like, why the fuck am I crying right now? Or why the fuck am I feeling some type of way? That is your prompt to sit back and listen to what your your higher self is kind of saying in that moment. And it's usually the first thing that crosses your mind, right? Type shit. But a lot of that going on. So lots of, lots of, who, who baby, lots of truth there. Um, so it's just been wild. I was actually not even planning on doing this video today. If I'm going to like keep it totally solid, I was planning on doing this uh, tomorrow. And I don't know, something in me was just like, nah, do it. So <laughs> today is the day, guys. Uh, so I won't hold you because actually, honestly, we got a lot to talk about. And maybe that's why, because we got a lot to talk about and we need to get that. We need to get the good word out there so that it can be uh, heard. So I won't even hold you. I won't even zoom it. So yeah, we're just gonna get into it. So 
The winds of change are blowing in your favor. Um, it's gonna be it's gonna be a good week. It's gonna be a good Aquarius season. It's gonna be a good rest of the astrological year. Uh, so tap in with me, uh, real quick. Make sure y'all uh, check out the channel at Way Up Network on YouTube for the latest videos that have dropped, and make sure you are subscribed to the channel and have that notification bell set to your preferences so that you know when new content drops so there's gonna be so much coming your way i just need to like go through this aquarius season get my mind right get my vibes right do some purging and pisces season and then we're we're in there like swimwear when when uh end of march comes around so give me some time to transition over the course of these next like six to eight weeks um because i'm just gonna be slowly over the next eight weeks this is what i'm saying Slowly over the next eight weeks, I'm going to be producing more content in different ways on all platforms. One more time, over the course of the next eight weeks, I'm going to be producing more content in different ways across all uh, platforms. So bear with me through this transition. That's why it's important to stay notified if y'all are tapped in with me like that and you want to know what the fuck is going on. Patreon always gets it first. YouTube, uh, Patreon always gets it first. And then of course, um, Instagram, social media, everything else kind of just falls after that. But uh, stay tuned for the updates, right? Because there's going to be a lot coming your way. Um, don't forget, you can also check out Patreon for extended additional and ad-free content. There's a link below in the description for that, along with some other links if you want to come hang out on social media. Um, and yeah. Yeah. A <laughs> last thing real quick while y'all are here, if you don't mind giving this video a thumbs up and dropping a comment or two, all the engagement really helps the channel grow. So thank you in advance. Sorry, guys. I'm like my mind. <laughs> this is going to be good. Trust me. We got a lot to talk about. <laughs> 222 and I'm looking at the time. <sighs> 722 when I looked at that little clock ticking up there. You see what I'm saying? Uh, it's going to be good. I just I'm trying to like I'm trying to be in my physical body while my mind is like not fucking here. So bear with me. All right. <clears throat> so. This is a busy week, y'all. A very busy week. We talked last week about Mercury moving into Aquarius, and that's how we will be starting off this week. So big energy around being up in the head space, but uh, no pun intended. What? I, my mind's not here? Hmm. Hello. <laughs> No wonder why. Uh, but big energy around being up in the headspace, but not in a destructive way, like it may have been in the case been the case for you in the past, uh, in the recent past, I should say, but rather in a really structured way that can help bring a lot of benefit into our lives. So we start to see the benefits of this transit immediately when Mercury and Aquarius becomes conjunct with Pluto and Aquarius on Monday, February. 5th. And this is a super charged mental aspect that has a seeing and understanding something or some things uh, for what it really is totally and completely and or someone uh, who they really is, uh, which is pushing us into swift action based on our discoveries and full picture understandings of what has really been going on in and around us. This energy will in turn allow us to close whatever case that we've been on uh, so that we can move on to new things. I feel like this week and all of Aquarius season really holds so much potential to really let shit go, start over and move forward. But as we all know, potential is only as good as what we do with it. So you'll have to really be committed to making change happen this week and throughout the rest of February in order to really reap the rewards from it. But Good news is there's no better time than now because the, the energy is working in your favor. With that being said, let's talk about this massive shift of energy taking place this week. And truly, we've really been kind of ramping up, you know, to this point of this shift that we're coming into for the past couple of weeks. And it may have felt slow or like you were hitting a wall with your progress, but all of that has the potential to shift this week if you're ready for it. So 
Are you ready for it? Let's see. We have Pallas moving into Sagittarius on the 6th, Ceres entering Capricorn on the 7th, Vesta going direct in Gemini on the the eighth and then we finish off the week with the super new moon in aquarius on the ninth and the start of the lunar new year on the 10th so gung hey fat choy let's break it down starting with palace in sagittarius so Pallas is the asteroid of wisdom, amongst other things, but the focus during this time is going to be around lessons learned since we're talking Sagittarius. Now, if you're searching for the meaning of a particular lesson in your life, Pallas and Sagittarius is asking you to throw out the details, stop overthinking the why, and just see to understand plain as day the lesson uh, behind what you were going through for what it is. An example of this could look like like a self-love lesson, right? Instead of thinking, why didn't this person love me? Why didn't they treat me better? Whatever, what have you, which is really a form of victimhood, um, you know, via taking things personally, uh, which is really how we keep ourselves like trapped in shit or trapped to shit or attached to things that really aren't like that we really don't need to attach to because they're not really benefiting us in any way. Palace and Sagittarius is, is saying like, think of it, Think of it like this. Instead of why didn't this person love me? Why didn't, you know, they treat me better? Why didn't they whatever? Think of it like this. This person couldn't love me at no fault to my own, right? Because when people don't treat us right, it's rarely ever a fault of us. <laughs> 9 9.999% out of 10, it is not about us, right? It just isn't. Uh, but looking at it in that way, this person couldn't love me. They couldn't treat me right and no fault to my own. This was simply an opportunity for me to give that love to myself, to, to be that person this person couldn't be for me, right? Big picture energy. That's how you like close out lessons, right? W wasn't this, wasn't that, doesn't matter why, this is what it is, this is what I learned from it, boom, move on. It's taking the lessons that you've been learning and wrapping them up with a final conclusion and understanding so that you can move forward on your journey and go off to experience new things. This aspect will be especially important for those of you who often find yourself dwelling on the past with no real resolution. So you stay kind of stuck in the same space doing nothing. Like we got to get out of that, right? Palace Athena is a courageous feminine Greek warrior strategist who isn't a afraid to stand up for herself and others to overcome any obstacle that stands in the way of her freedom and feminine power. She brings a protective energy that seeks justice against oppressive people and situations. So if you've been stuck on a lesson that has been keeping you oppressed, it's time to see past the surface, to take a deeper, a deeper look at the bigger picture and work to move forward with grace. This is your chance to truly wise up and level up in life and love and relationships and job and money and your foundations and your career, whatever your focus has been on, wherever the, the, the sphere of lessons has been spinning. Now is the time to become a master of all that you've been through by being able to see shit for what it is and move yourself into a free, liberated and empowered space. It's time to adapt the mindset that knowledge is truly power and wisdom, wisdom really is wealth. And if you don't have these things in life, you don't have anything. Really feel me for a second. What can you do if you don't know what to do? Nothing, <laughs> right? <laughs> Which is why you've been feeling blocked from the blessings you've been working towards because that feeling of I don't know is paralyzing, right? 
when you tap into true understanding, and for a lot of us that comes by way of really getting out of our ego and fear and align, aligning ourselves to the energy of surrender and really sitting with ourselves and listening diligently to the message that come through from our higher mind, it is cerebral season after all, that is when you really get to see the bigger picture of whatever you're going through. And this is when you set yourself free. So if you've been stuck, air quotes, on lessons that you truly have already learned, now is the time to wise up and move forward. Think of this energy like the justice card meets the strength card, and then they birth temperance, right? Justice, Pallas Athena, um, uh, um, strength, Sag. Strength is actually Leo. Sag is actually temperance. But in this terminology, right? Uh, strength, Sag with temperance, balance of that physical energy and that soul lesson growth energy that you've been having to work through, coming into perfect balance, being in flow and everything just being right and is aligned. And temperance to me is alignment. It's peace, harmony, and balance and all the things, but it's alignment nonetheless. Um, and that's really what we're, we've been working on. And that's what we're striving for Four and the last of closing the case on the last of these lessons is is the catalyst to that. So it's we're really building the bridge that we're going to get ready to walk over um, come airy season. So speaking of moving forward, <laughs> let's talk serious moving into Capricorn. So more asteroid action for you this week, but unlike Pallas, who seeks to bring an end to injustices, Ceres seeks to uh, aid in that process by moving us into a new healthy cycle that is truly best for us long term. And when in Capricorn, that energy is amplified since Capricorn speaks to long term energy. When we talk series, <clears throat> we're talking the nurturing asteroid, the Virgo mama. <clears throat> the Virgo mama who just wants what's best for her babies. Um, and in Capricorn, this is a huge push in the right direction for all of us, leading with disciplined focus on planting seeds and ensuring they grow to their fullest potential. Ceres will be in Capricorn for a while, pretty much all of 2024, and she will be going retrograde in May and then stationing direct in August. So while Ceres is in Capricorn, expect starting new projects and reaching the goals that you've set around them to take center stage. If you've been wanting to be successful in any capacity or have success in any capacity related to work, career, finances, home, family, and even health, if you've been longing for stability and security within your life and with the foundations your life is built on, then now is going to be the time to really make it happen while Ceres is in Capricorn helping helping you nurture whatever it's going to take uh to to do that 111 on the time um so yeah this is about nurturing yourself your goals and your good name thinking what who do you want to be known for um who do you want to be known for Answering that question, take care of that person. What mark do you want to leave on the world? Answering that question and taking care of your business to make that happen. Your mantra for series in Capricorn is, this is what it's going to be. And so it will be because now is your chance to uh, go hard and make process uh, progress without limiting blocks. Last year where we felt like we were limited, where we were blocked, where things were kind of stalled or stuck or weren't really moving, this year is changing that. We're going to be able to make more progress without as many blocks. There is kind of a weird period of time, like I said, leaving spring, coming into summer, kind of a little bit of a weird energy coming in, um, some retrogrades going on, maybe some setbacks, whatever. Uh, but really this is a year of progression to make progress. So limited blocks move while you can. If the energy is right for the pick in, pick that shit. You know what I'm saying? Moving on to midweek. <laughs> 
<laughs> Middle week, we have Vesta going direct in Gemini. And honestly, this feels really good. It feels really good. Vesta is our fire within. I think of it like our solar sacral plexus area. It's the center of ourself. It's our life force energy. Um, but it is our fire within. And with it being retrograde in Gemini, a sign that doesn't like to sit still, uh, it could feel like our inner flame was snuffed out. Fatigue could have set in in your life, a little seasonal depression, a feeling of angst and impatience, possibly some frustration and feeling like you weren't whole or complete within or like something, which you know what it was, was missing. All of these feelings are coming to an end slowly but surely as Vesta goes retrograde in Gemini. Feels pretty good. Am I right? It's the energy of like, wow, Stacy, I'm really starting to feel like myself again. It's like that type of energy, which is going to feel really, really, really good uh, to your confidence, which also comes from your solar plexus, from your fire within. But it's going to be a really, really uh, amazing boost to your confidence levels to your courage levels, to your strength levels, to your tenacity, all the fire energies, your creativity, your, um, you know, spicy fire energy. So all of the things, um, and it just, yeah, where you were feeling less in those areas, passionate, less creative, less excited, all of that is getting ready to change. So Vesta going direct is bringing the energy of next steps. So during this time, while your energy is slowly creeping back up on you, you should be thinking about your next steps in life. What am I going to do next after this? Insert whatever, you know, you put an end to with Palace and Sag and whatever cycle series in Capricorn is pushing you towards. What are the next steps? How am I going to get there? Um, and what do I need to do now in this moment and in the foreseeable future to make progress towards uh, whatever it is that I'm going to do? So more cerebral energy here in cerebral season, but all for good reason. You want to make sure that you have your plans and strategies ready come airy season. And this is the time to get it all taken care of and figured out. By this time, you should absolutely be in the energy of moving out and away from endings and moving towards beginnings. And if you're not, it is time to get yourself there. Align yourself to your inner flame uh, and your inner voice and you'll be on the right track in no time. Uh, finally, let's talk the end of the week, which by the way is going out with a bang. So on Friday, we have the super new moon in Aquarius and then Saturday, we kick off the lunar new year. So speaking first to the super new moon in Aquarius and as always, if you want to come hang out on Patreon for the new moon live, we're going to um, do that this week week later in the week, probably around the 7th or 8th um, of February. So come tap in with us if you want to. The link uh, to Patreon is below, but I will bri uh, briefly break down the new moon vibes here real quick. So the new moon in Aquarius is peaking at approximately 4.59 p.m. Central Standard Time on February 9th, 2024. And uh, the main theme around this super new moon is you do you, playa, in the most authentic way. Uh, in order to be a part of the whole Aquarian humanitarian energy, we must first be whole within ourselves. We cannot look to other people and things outside of ourselves to heal the wounds that make us feel devoid of the fullness within ourselves. We must do the filling first if we want to pour into and be poured into adequately. The super new moon in Aquarius is bringing this kind of energy into our awareness because for the first time since 2008, Chiron, the wounded warrior asteroid, will be aspecting very closely to the moon's north node of destiny. So what does this mean? Aquarius energy is all about authenticity and individuality. Who are you amongst the collective? In what ways are you special? What sets you apart from the crowd? In what ways do you stand out? What do you have to offer the whole? And what do you bring to the table by being you and showing up as 
all that you are. These are the questions of Aquarius and operating fully in your Aquarian energy, which is being true to you, who you are and what you stand for, pushes you down your destined path with ease because in doing this, you show that you don't really give a fuck what other people think about you. <laughs> operating in this energy allows you to release your inhibitions and really do you. But doing this, doing you, can be challenging when there are deep-seated wounds at play, making you feel as though you can't be any of the things that you are because you don't feel safe to. And we all have our different reasons for not feeling safe, but this world will do it to you in one way or another. Welcome to hell. Everyone turn to your neighbor and say, welcome to hell, bitch, right? Type of energy. Now, the truth is... The truth is, this world is a cold place to be. And if anybody knows that, it's the signs that have been through it all, seen it all, and done it all, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. But when you have a clear understanding of the world and the role that you play in it, nothing and no one, not even those deep wounds can stop you from getting up and fulfilling what you came here to do. And that's miente is what this super new moon in Aquarius is all about. So now is your chance to do you by addressing and healing whatever wound is keeping you from living authentically and living out your purpose. Now is the time to do whatever you want to do whilst being the person you are meant to be in this lifetime. And after all that you've been through, you owe it to yourself to do you. So don't let yourself down this time around. I'm on, I'm on some Dr. Sue shit. One fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, knickknack, paddywhack. <laughs> Oops, out of time. My bacon is smelling fine. I'll give you $2 if you could tell me what that's from. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Anyways. <laughs> so that's a super new moon in Aquarius in a nutshell. Um, it's going to be a good one. So tap in. Uh, but finally, finally, we get to talk about the thing that I am most excited for this year. And that is the Lunar New Year, a.k.a. Chinese New Year. Um, but I love when the, the Lunar New Year comes around each year. To me, it really does feel more like a new year um, than the January 1st one that was just like fucking made up out of thin air. Um, this one actually has purpose and meaning. It is centered around um, the... Uh, the, uh, the <laughs> It's centered around the Gregorian calendar. So the end of spring, usually the second full moon uh, of the year, it usually happens between the end of January and the mid to end February this year. It's beginning on the 10th and it will finish with the Lantern Festival, I believe, on the 21st or 28th or something like that. But Anywho, um, this year is a big deal because it is the year of the dragon, the wood dragon specifically, and we will talk about that, but the dragon holds the most power and strength in Chinese culture, and I just feel like it is so symbolic with Aquarius season um, that we're in kind of right now, getting all the juices flowing and the vibes going, and really a testament to what this year is going to look like being as it is is an eight year itself. Everything is so intimately interconnected. And uh, when you really are open and you tap into like a little bit of everything, you you open your mind and you really get your in, you put your diversity hat on and you just like learn about a bunch of different shit and you're just like tapped in a bunch of different shit. You realize everything is so fucking connected. And you also recognize what is disconnected. Mm, mm, that's some Aquarius shift for y'all way ass 122 on the time um you also realize what is so disconnected and it just gives you a different perspective on yourself in the world and the role you play in it so fitting so on brand for this time period but let's talk about the lunar new year gung hey fat choy i'm so fucking excited so when i was tapping in 
to the energy of the wood dragon. It is the year of the dragon, but again, specifically the wood dragon, right? Five elements. <clears throat> when I was tapping into the energy of the wood dragon, I was getting Capricorn energy all day. And unlike your typical intense but charismatic fire breathing dragon energy, the wood dragon has a more reserved and disciplined energy to it. Now, that doesn't make it any less enthralling because it's still a dragon after all, but it's definitely the most noticeably different expression of dragon energy. So the wood dragon energy is all about steady progress that leads to slow but ultimately the most rewarding growth and expansion. It's the most sustainable. It's the most long-term. It's the most like, yes, you plant a seed and you got to do all the shit and to watch it grow. But when it does, it's like so rewarding and so beautiful and so long-term, right? Think of planting a tree. You fucking plant a tree, plant the seed, whatever. The tree go grows over fucking, you know, a certain amount of time, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, whatever. And that tree, as long as humans don't come and fuck shit up, uh, will be around for, could be around for hundreds of years, thousands of years even, right? Type shit. So it is slow, but ultimately the most rewarding growth and expansion. And with that kind of energy at play is going to be a time to start new projects, to start your new business, to start that new hobby, start that new whatever, right? Start that thing that you have been saying that you are going to start, that you are going to do, that you haven't. Think big and outside of the box and focus on only the things that you want to do and create and take these things on with confidence and doing that will ensure the ultimate success of whatever you do. So if you're ready for change and to commit yourself to a new way of life, then the year of the wood dragon is bringing all the right shifts and opportunities your way, right? The winds of change are blowing in your favor as hype energy. Now, I will mention that the year of the wood dragon favors career, work, business, money, and um, philanthropic ventures over personal and interconnected relationships. Um, but because this is a year of personal transformation in itself, this makes the most sense. And if you've been overly focused or concerned with everyone and everything else but yourself and the foundation of your life, then this shift in energy will be extremely beneficial to you should you choose not to fight it. If you put anyone or anything above yourself this year, you will regret it. If you put your, your yearnings before, how do I say this? If you put like your yearnings for what you do want ahead of, of the work that it will take to bring that into your experience, you will regret it. This isn't a year for like daydreaming. This is a year for like, these are my dreams this is my plan. This is my strategy. Together, this makes the blueprint. Now I'm here. I get to work. I make it fucking happen. I don't complain. I persevere. I, I do that shit. That is this year. If you do anything other than that, you will be disappointed. And it doesn't mean that you can't like it doesn't mean that love won't be in the air. It doesn't mean that, oh God, if you are in a fucking relationship, it's doomed. Or if you've been dying for love, it's not possible. It doesn't mean any of those things. It just means that those things won't be the center of your whole entire world. And that is good this year because if all of those things take precedence over the things that you have been trying to create for your life, and they always have been and things haven't worked out for you, then really what you're saying is I'm just going to subscribe to this old reality, fuck the new one. I'm going to just do my own thing that isn't really aligned to the thing that I should be doing or want or on a, on a soul level want to do. I'm just going to kind of like feed my ego and I'm just going to go this way. You will be disappointed. You will. I'm telling you right now, like... <laughs> Shit is not all puppies and rainbows if you don't want to do the work. So we need to talk about the real. Like, 
<laughs> if you put anyone or anything above yourself this year, you will regret it. You will regret it. You will be disappointed. You will be, <sighs> it'll be bad. It'll be bad. And I only say it'll be bad, not because your life will just fucking go to shambles, but you're not going to be happy. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> With that being said, this lunar new year, is, this lunar year technically, right, is all about courage, tenacity, strength, power, knowledge, wisdom, and even a hint of introvertedness, but not in a reclusive way where you're just like antisocial all year. Uh, it's really in a smart way. The introvert energy that's here with the energy of the wood dragon is to, isn't to be utilized in like a standoffish way, but rather in a way of reserving your energy and focusing focusing it on only what is aiding in the, in the themed energies that we just talked about. Anything that is like superficial and like familial and like like reminders, smells like, tastes like the old kind of energy that we've we're just gonna like kind of turn our nose at it and go the other direction. Highly recommended, by the way. Sometimes you really just need to like keep to yourself, which makes this an eight of pentacles year, in my opinion. Head down on your solo shit, running off pure faith, consistency, and hard work. And this lunar new year will be the most auspicious for those who embody this energy. You want to talk about luck? If you mind your business and you handle your business, then luck will be right next to you for the entire year. You will see things actually turn to fruition, right? It is a fruition energy, right? Abundant energy. Um, so how can you really thrive this Lunar New Year? So embody tenacity in the face of adversity and don't be afraid to take some risks. Maintain patience and grace and try to break away from any lingering limiting behaviors, patterns, or people that have the potential to stunt your growth. I think the biggest takeaway from this Lunar New Year is that the best things in life come when we are confident in making them happen. <laughs> this is, um, that is this year and it's really your chance to do exactly that. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Have Happy Lunar New Year. Happy Super New Moon in Aquarius. Happy, happy, joy, joy. The winds of change are blowing in your favor. I just want to tell y'all this, man. I think I need to like say this just real quick, like a PSA. The only person that was responsible for your life and the choices you made or didn't make last year in 2023 was you. This year, same concept applies. Every year of your life, except I guess when you were a kid, right? Semantics, totally on you. <laughs> so totally on you. So we all have choices because we all have free will, which means that we can, you know, figure out what we're going to do and do that shit. Or we can sit with what we want to do, slack off, self-limit, sit in our stuff, not heal it. You focus on other things, not work on ourselves, entertain stuff that's not really going to serve us right now as opposed to like build the life that we want to live. Like we can do all of these things. We can let negative mindsets, feelings, thoughts, energies bring us down, or we can switch that around and allow these types of energies to bring us up. And it's all about what you choose this year. I think that, you know, starting out in the beginning of this year, speaking from like January 1st, right? Through March, it's really a choosing energy, choosing what you want to do, who you want to be around, what type of life you want to create. Like this is go time. We've been preparing for the big shift of Pluto in Capricorn to Pluto Aquarius. This year, we are feeling that. It's still a progressive year as we learn because it is an eight and uh, the wood dragon, which is also, you know, symbolic of that energy and Newman Aquarius, so on and so forth. So 
all of these energies still speak to an energy of progression. But if you're not making progress this year, you're still kind of like doing what you was doing last year, like kind of just like sitting on shit and not really doing anything with it or like knowing what you need to do, but like not doing it or whatever. Um, you will be disappointed. <laughs> you will be disappointed. It's almost like delaying destiny. Like if you're doing that, like you can, you can, I hate to even say that you can, but free will says you can do that. Um, but you really won't want to every, all signs point to progress, growth, fruition, manifestation, things happening, things moving, things going, things flowing. And if you choose to look outside of that or step outside of that, I don't want to sound hella restrictive, right? But if, if you choose to like not tap into your potential, then it's like how they say, don't fall in love with potential. Because what I tell y'all earlier, potential is only ever as good as what we do with it. Some people never live up to their potential because they didn't want to. That was their choice, right? You see potential in someone, you want to lift them up, you want to raise them up, you want to, you want to, oh my gosh, this person could be all of these amazing things. And then they don't have the courage, they don't have the strength, they don't have the desire, the willpower to get up and do it. And now you're disappointed because this person never lived up to their potential. This person is you this year and you have a choice to live up to your potential or not. You will be disappointed if you don't you got it. You can do it. And, um, you know, easier said than done, but it's time to create all new habits. It's time to really shift our energy in, into alignment with the beautiful energy that is, um, ahead of us and available to us. And now's the time. Now is the time. All right. Off my soapbox, we're going to go ahead and get into, the messages. Let's do. We're going to do air first. All right. Okay. I didn't even write a timestamp for y'all, my bad. 42. All right. <clears throat> Air signs, Gemini, Libra, Aquarius. We're going to use the wisdom of the Oracle and the intuitive true heart tarot today two red decks i'm just now realizing i guess i was feeling festive with the lunar new year that was at hand here but um wisdom of the oracle was most fitting so Your love's like honey, sticky and slow. Drip drop like raindrops. But you gotta have some more. I know that pretty Ricky song. All right, so I'm gonna do something a little different today. I actually didn't like think I didn't get prompted to do this until now. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna flow with it. I don't know if I'm gonna do this for every reading, but they're wanting me to do it for this one. So um, you guys have number 51, five and one milk and honey, which is why I was singing that um, pretty Ricky song. If you ain't heard it, slap that shit. But number 51, five and one breaking down to a six with milk and honey. Um, I'm actually going to read this out of the book. <laughs> Not something I normally do, but I'm going to do it. So um Okay, milk and honey. So uh, essential meanings, the taste of prosperity, opportunities, born of authenticity, nurturing abundance, trusting that your needs will be met. Well, damn, that's the whole... <laughs> 
<laughs> that's the whole what's the vibe portion. So air sign speaking volumes, man. It's milk and honey, all about the taste of prosperity, opportunities being born out of what? Authenticity, new moon in Aquarius. Um, nurturing your abundance series in uh, Capricorn and trusting that all of your needs will be met. Beautiful energy. The Oracle's message for you guys is this. You've entered a sweet time in your life, enjoying the land of milk and honey that everyone wants to experience. It's an interlude that feels more languid than ambitious. When all of your senses Oh, excuse me. When all your senses are awake to the unlimited possibilities of the universe, these times are precious and only come when you're in your authentic zone, wearing the world as a loose garment, not wanting yet able to be nourished in both ways, tangible and subtle. Abundance is an energy that you are all a living part of. All your needs are being met. You are given the gift of nourishment in every form. <laughs> well, <sighs> something tells me you guys already know this, though, because bottom of the deck and I'm not going to read this. I just, I don't know. I felt called to read that one, maybe because it's literally the entire thing that we were just talking about. But number 43, four and three, breaking down to a seven, deep knowing. And what I just realized is that this chop, this chop wood energy really caught my attention. This car, when I tried to pick it up, it fell out. So I was like, what the hell? But then it's bringing my attention attention to this chop wood energy, which is the six, which is an energy of six. So this chop wood energy is saying that you guys have kind of been in a repetitive cycle. It's like punching air, like doing the same thing not and getting the same results. Like definition of crazy is doing the same thing and not getting <laughs> and not <laughs> getting the results you're looking for. So driving yourself crazy is kind of the energy that's here when deep down inside all you know that all you've needed to do was embrace you. I think this is I think this has a lot to do with you guys um trying to fight your way out of the rat race, trying to fight your way out of the matrix, trying to reprogram your brain and your mind to say, I don't have to do it the societal norm way. I can do it my own way. And that way can be great. And that way can work. And that way can be Sorry, my mic was doing some weird shit. Um, but not doing it the societal norm way, the way that we, we were taught not to rock the boat, stand in line, raise your hand, don't be ambitious, <laughs> like all of these fucking things. Like you've been having to reprogram your mind to say, you know what, I can do it. I can take that step forward. I can start that business. I can have that love that I'm looking for. Like you, you've been training your mind from feeling like trapped in a certain like box to like expanding your mind to endless possibilities. It's like breaking out of jail and you've been in there ever since you were like 18 and you're fucking 47 now and the world is like a whole new place and y'all know what to do with it because you know what I'm saying you ain't been out of jail in for you know 30 years whatever like type shit and so I think you guys I'm getting like an eight of swords with this which is the jail card it's literally like trapping out of a and um, breaking out of a mental prison that you kind of put yourself in in a way and so I really feel like the message for you guys is that the only thing standing in the way between you and the success of whatever it is that you that you want is um being authentic being true to you operating in that way in everything that you do there's a lot of like repressing truth and like afraid to be the self and like fear of rejection and like fear of failure and like you know playing it small or playing it safe almost feels like better than taking a risk and like that's the exact opposite of the energy that's here and so but you guys are knowing that with that deep knowing energy and this week you guys are um 
I want to say breaking free of this prison. Even this chopped wood energy is giving me prison vibes. I mean, look at the contrast in these energies. Chop wood is dark and dull and drab and my life is meaningless and not saying that your life is meaningless, but that's the feeling of this chopped wood card. And then we have this contrast to milk and honey. It's abundance. It's riches. It's the creme de la creme, the best of the best. Like it's all the things. And the only thing separating you from this energy is what your soul is telling you to do. Just be you. Put yourself out there. Try that thing. Take that risk because there's a part of you that intuitively knows that you're going to be successful at whatever this is, but there's still some fear. And I, and, and I do feel like it's coming from doubt, but it's only coming from doubt because the doubt was instilled in you somewhere along the way. You've been having a difficult time breaking free from the doubt. That's why it feels like eight of swords. Eight of swords is like I said, it's a, it's a prison energy. Literally. I mean, literally could mean like somebody's locked up type shit locked up. They won't let me out, but it's, it's like that kind of energy. Um, but it's also an energy of like feeling stuck and not seeing that there's a way out or, you know, um, being trapped in one sort of train of thought when, you know, it's like waiting on the other shooter drop. It's fear. It's fear. I don't know. Let's pull some tarot. Let's see what we got here. Yep. Fear. Someone is at the front door. I don't know what that is. And I'm not answering it. Anyways, um, What the hell? Sorry, I'm like watching the video camera <laughs> to see who it was. Um, I don't know who it was. Somebody with a clipboard, a clipboard and a yellow vest. I, you nobody ever comes to my house, but it seems like every, the last couple times, every time I've been trying to like get on here to like give the message, some something has been going on. I've been having to like pause. Somebody in the house acting crazy. Somebody at the door, like something going on. Something haywire, like. I don't know what it is. It's an energy of distraction. And to me, that's like, it's like, like some op shit. Like I'm over here getting these like significant downloads and channelings and energies and whatever. And like, motherfuckers is really seeking to distract lately. And if that is, that's not a coincidence. So if that is happening in your own life, make sure you tap into that and eliminate the opposition in whichever way you see fit. But um weird. Anyways, guys, sorry about that. Um but yeah, it's you. What's getting in the way? Prince of Wands in the reverse uh and the 10 of pentacles. It's a fear of not getting to where you want to be. Ten of Pentacles is the overall abundance. It's, it's success. It is mastering this physical world, this life. It's money. It's longevity. It's, um, I, I keep getting this energy of like success, 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 success. But that's your milk and honey, this Ten of Pentacles. And with that Prince of Wands in the reverse, it's like you're having a fear, a doubt that you're not able to get to this, Right? You'd be riding your phoenix straight to the Ten of Pentacles if you were confident. But with this in the reverse, it's a fear of not being able to make it for some reason. That's what I'm hearing. Not being able to make it. Some of y'all could be worried about money, about finances. Y'all could be worried about um, not hitting a certain level of stability or success in your life. That's exactly what it is. Queen of Pentacles. I don't know if I'm good enough. I'm hearing Queen of Pentacles energy. I don't know if I'm good enough. 
This is expanding your mind. I told y'all this is expanding your mind. Not the eight of swords, but the eight of wands and the ten of swords where you feel kind of broken down and defeated and just like kind of raked over the coals when it comes to life. Eight of wands is asking you to open your mind and expand expand it so that you can see that you can make it, that you are capable of making it to the milk and honey. The milk and honey for you guys is your destiny. So some of you guys, this, like I said, this could be about your work and career, like you're destined to go down a specific path in your work and your career, which is really what I feel it is. I'm going to be honest with you. It's really this energy of like, I know I'm supposed to be successful. I know I'm supposed to, you know, be famous. I know I'm supposed to start this nonprofit. I know I'm supposed to, you know, open this business. I know I'm supposed to be the head of a company. I know I'm supposed to be doing bigger, better than what I am doing. There's almost this energy of like all of this shit is beneath me. And you know what? Good for you because I, I really feel like, you know, some of y'all might be like, oh, I don't want to get into my ego, but with the prince of wands in the reverse it's like you kind of need to get into your ego like this this to me feels like really passive like really like self-effacing like really on the end of like humble but to the point where it's like not worthy of self like I don't feel worthy of the the milk and honey I don't feel good enough like I can't do that I can't be that kind of energy and it doesn't have to it doesn't have to just be working career or business or money or finances or stability or security, even though I'm feeling all of those things. This can literally be the energy of like, um, will I ever be happy in love? Will I ever be able to find the one after all of this trauma, after all of this baggage? Is that kind of energy? Am I going to be alone forever? Like it can be th these thoughts too. But like I said, the only thing that's stopping you from getting to your abundance, from getting to your milk and honey um, is your mind. This eight of wands is powerful. I don't think I've ever seen an eight of wands other than this deck that that really highlighted the mental energy. This is expansion of your mind, of your consciousness past the world, the life that you've been living that has, you know, this, to me, this all these swords are like all the negative thoughts that have been put into your head that have like paralyzed you from moving towards whatever this milk and honey energy is. Eight of Swords, boom. This Eight of Swords is scary as hell to me too. Like it's such a creepy Eight of Swords. It reminds me of like a fucking spider, but Eight of Swords energy, what I say, feeling trapped by your own making. Look at this person's hair is tied into all these swords. The hair is where on your crown, on your head is mental, trapped by your own thoughts, trapped by your own uh, negativity, your self-doubt. And this isn't a judgment game, but this is highlighting where you're at with it. It's time, Queen of Swords, to like not, not only be real with yourself and show up as yourself, but to clear your mind. Get rid of the negative self-limiting beliefs is really the energy that's here. <sighs> hmm. You have the King of Wands here with the Prince of Swords. Oops. You have the King of Wands here with your Prince of Swords. Now, what I feel is interesting is that we saw the Prince of Wands over here in the reverse lacking the confidence. And King of Wands is all about confidence. This is everything you need to be in the energy that you're, that is, this is everything that you, the King of Wands is everything that you need to be in which is currently separating you from where you want to be. So King of Wands makes sense here, but what's interesting with this Prince of Swords energy is almost kind of like interesting message. It's like, what is going to help you do this? Some of you guys may, may be struggling with this. Maybe this is why it's coming through like this. But what's interesting to me is it's almost like doing whatever you are not confident to do eliminates 
the fear and reprograms the self-limiting beliefs that you have around not feeling worthy enough to achieve the goals that you're trying to achieve. So if you're looking for some quick fix solution to like, got to get out of my head first and then go do, I feel like the message that spirit is really driving home for you this week, air signs, is that it isn't like, got to get out of my head, change my mind, fix my mental, and then go do. It's do because in that action, in that doing King of Wands energy, it, it naturally rewires your brain. So it's almost like you have to take the action. You have to move. You have to do that thing you're afraid to do. You have to put yourself out there. You have to stop chopping wood and start moving towards your milk and honey because that is what is going to naturally open up and expand your mind. So no seeing is believing. No, like I have to fix my mind before I go and do. No, I got to get my mind right before this can happen. Like it's almost like you need to just be fearless and indecisive and go and do Queen of Swords energy to be able to get out of this Eight of Swords energy. It's almost like you have to free yourself. It's almost like, um, having to face your fear, whatever your fear is, whatever your reservation is, like it, like doing that shit afraid so that your mind can reprogram naturally. It's not anything that you need to do. It's something that you need to allow to happen. Overall, ace of wands. Go and do. Take action. Phoenix rising from the ashes. Here's your ashes. Ten of swords. Here's life and everybody and everything in between beating you down. And this is you saying, fuck that shit. I'm out. Ace of wands. I'm going to move towards my milk and honey. My reality doesn't have to be this way anymore. The future is possible. I can do what I want. I'm worthy of what I want. Putting yourself out there in that capacity. Queen of swords, um, uh, which is going to be your inner knowing here in this context. Your feminine energy. Uh, which is your energy, and then King of Wands, which is your confident energy, which is the energy that's going to actively take you to this milk and honey. It's embodying this um, to sort of re re rewire and reprogram your mind and your energy naturally. There's some heartbreak attached to this, some pain, a lot of pain from the past. <sighs> People making you feel like you're not good enough. Some people pleasing energies as well. Could be some bad breakups, heartbreaks, people telling you that you're a big doo-doo head, whatever, right? Uh, you'll never make it. You'll never mount to nothing. These kind of energies, we're working through those by doing what they said we couldn't do. Amen. Distractions. Air signs. You see how many people don't want you to win? <laughs> they don't want you to get out of that. But you're going to. And um, sucks for them. <laughs> All right. All right. Earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Taurus, Virgo, and Capricorn. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Okay. Um, so I am going to read you the first card that came out um of the deck here. Um, I guess I'm just kind of gonna 
going to kind of go with it. I did it for air signs. Wasn't sure if I was going to do it for everyone, but I guess I will because it seems that the first card keeps coming out like alone and then no other cards want to come out until like this one is acknowledged. So the vibes are definitely weird today. Totally on brand with Aquarius season, but number 43 air signs got this card by the way, number seven deep knowing. So let's go ahead and uh, hit up 43 here in this book and we'll read it. I guess this is going to be like your overall energy, like what is really kind of um, taking the forefront for you guys during this week. So we'll just embrace it. We'll just embrace it. So number 43, deep knowing. So essential meanings, intuition, listening to the oracle within, i.e. your higher self, um, your, you know, your your higher self, your crown chakra, angels, ancestors, guides, Jesus, Buddha, Allah, whoever, whatever you subscribe to, um, the oracle within is that. <laughs> empathy and hypersensitivity. So the Oracle's message is this. Intuition is the faculty that allows you to enter into a dialogue with source, the consciousness that you are a part of but cannot see within the naked eye. It's perplexing that people are taught to ignore this natural capacity to navigate their journeys, to access their inner guidance. Know that you have the ability to read between the lines and find out all the truth that was missing when the story was told. This deep knowing allows you to open the door to wisdom far greater than what is available in the limitations of the human experience. You're given information that may make no sense whatsoever to the logical mind or five senses, but which is 100% correct and true. The trick is to listen and then to act accordingly. You're now invited into this sacred dialogue of deep knowing. So tune in, trust your vibes. They will be right. Ask and you will receive answers from unusual sources. Oh my God. Um, hmm. Interesting. So I just feel like, I don't know, Earth signs, you're kind of giving me like an air energy. Air was giving me fire. You're giving me air. It's almost like um, I. it's not even water, which water normally is associated with your intuition and this inner knowing. But for some reason, there's something about this energy that feels like straight up air. Like, like air is an energy of factual. It's like cold, hard, proof, receipts, facts. This is what it is straightforward, blunt, honest, can't tell me nothing. I already know what it is. I don't even know how I know. I just fucking know that to me is kind of like air energy. And it makes sense because air is the cerebral energy that we've been talking about. But also what is kind of cerebral is your crown. It's at the top of your head, right near your third eye, which is your spiritual knowing and foresight. And I almost want to say that you've had to take your emotions or are having to take your emotions out of something, or maybe you're just putting them to the side at this point in your life to really tap into what your spiritual logic kind of energy is saying. It feels like a really cold not cold, a really like open, bra and pure like channel that is kind of going on here for you this week. And I really feel like it's bringing a lot of healing to you. Uh, maybe healing that you didn't know you need, maybe healing you did know you need. But uh, number 52, five and two, breaking down to another seven. So sevens being of significance to you guys. Um you have mending, and then you have number 24, two and four, breaking down to a six, time for a nap, and then uh, number 23, two and three, breaking down to a five with peace. So, wow. Um, I don't know. I feel like something is going to, something is going to happen. <sighs> My back is hurting all of a sudden, like between the shoulder blades. 
I don't feel so good. Um, wow. Okay. So this is coming through a couple of ways. So just ride with me here. I think you guys have been racking your brain about something, analyzing it, depicting it, going over and over and over and over and over and over and over about something, trying to find the truth so that you can either let something go fully, completely, close a chapter, or so you can make the right decision about something. Could be one or the other for you, could be both. That's the two ways I'm getting it. So take it how it resonates from here on out. But that's what it feels like. It's like trying to get to some sort of like truth, closure, conclusion, so you can let something go or so that you can um, make the right choice. And maybe making the right choice, I say right because, you know, I think that the right choice and whatever this is, is going to be what your intuition is saying. And that's why spirit is highlighting that so much. But there's something intuitively that I think you've been like way in your mind about for a while now. This doesn't feel new to this week. It feels like something you've been like going over. It's like this we're playing over and over and over and over and over in your mind mind and you're mentally drained and exhausted if you look on time for a nap that's a fox in the moon and fox energy is uh mental it's literally fox is gemini energy <laughs> air energy air energy sleeping on the moon which is water which is intuition you see what i'm saying i didn't even realize this sly fucker was even there but you see what i'm saying time for a nap is telling you to ease your mind peace is coming it's on the horizon but it comes when you trust your intuition about a situation and it's around healing. It's like you either have to like see the truth of something so that you can like let it go and heal or see the truth of something so you can make a wise, educated, knowledgeable, um, uh, um, uh, educated decision on something so that you can go and heal. Again, either way, take it how it resonates, but that's what it feels. The mental overload is coming to an end this week. That's why time for a nap is here. The mind is winding down, winding down and inner peace is coming in because you're doing what you know you need to do. You have your final truth, clarity, closure, whatever the hell you are looking for, earth signs, you're getting it this week and now you can rest now 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 the true healing of this can begin and now peace can kind of come in and replace all of that mental freaking angst <laughs> oh, i feel a relief i feel a fucking relief sorry i don't mean to cuss <laughs> You're seeing the light at the end of the tunnel, five of pentacles in the reverse, a shift in what? Perspective. No more dark hole, no more dark tunnel. You're seeing the light. You're seeing what it is. Some of you guys could have had people around you that were taking from you. You weren't noticing that they were taking from you physically, mentally, emotionally, energetically. Somebody you had around you that was like, didn't have integrity, like they... They were just like doing shady shit behind your back or they were, again, this to me, it feels like a, an energy drainer. We have that fox energy here. It's a little deceptive, but this hand over this five of pentacles is an energy of taking. So somebody could have been taking from you, like I said, draining your energy financially, whatever, what have you, it is this energy of taking. So some of you guys could be doing away from a take, doing away with a taker in your life or finally making peace, uh, you know, with a, a situ, uh, um, a, a, a irreciprocal situation in your life because you're seeing the truth of what it was and you're able to kind of create peace out of that and let it go. Then look at these cards, alignment with the lovers to happiness with the sun and a new cycle can begin with the Wheel of Fortune. And what is on the top of this Wheel of Fortune card specifically? It is a, it's an, it, to me, it looks like an eagle, eagle, hawk, either way, birds of prey, bird of clarity, bird of higher sight, sees the snake down below, right? Uh, Wheel of Fortune, 
is um, Jupiter energy, but it does depict the the cycle of it. So learning the lesson here at the bottom with the snake, which is like devil energy in traditional tarot um, in, in the Wheel of Fortune card, and then coming to the top, which is usually an angel uh, here, which is higher divine wisdom sight here with this hawk, eagle, whatever. Like I said, same concept with either one. It looks like a hawk, but it also looks like an eagle. I don't know. Fuck it. They look the same. But anyways... <laughs> It's the, they both eat snakes and that's the point. They both represent higher sight, divine wisdom, knowledge, whatever, what have you. Total alignment with happiness and you're moving forward into a new cycle because you're seeing something finally for what it is. I'm excited for you because the, that pressure that was in my back was like lifted. <laughs> like when I saw it and that's the crazy part, right? When you see whatever this is, when you shift your perspective to see whatever this is, the lesson, the truth, the person, whatever, that weight becomes lifted because you know now what, what you need to do to, to get away from this. Let me get a card for mending. Damn, our signs. Let me get a card for mending. What is this mending energy? What is this mending energy? <sighs> what? I feel like you guys were at odds with somebody that was like really immature. Now the whole deck wants to freaking, oh, this is like a yucky situation. I feel like, yeah, could have been some self-worth for you guys. You got the nine of pentacles in the reverse, more energy of that taking kind of energy. Nine of pentacles in the reverse is like, codependent. It's like not feeling confident. Um, it's not feeling stable financially, physically. And the two people that we have here on the board is the, the knight of wands and the queen of wands. And they're both in the reverse. So there's a significant male or female, doesn't matter. It is to women on this card specifically, uh, but doesn't matter male or female. This knight of wands energy and this queen of wands energy is showing a difference in energy. Um, and you do have mending, which also has two people on here. So could be dealing with a specific person, somebody that was like not reliable, somebody that was like not dependable, that was like in, out, hot, cold, all over the place. Could have, if it was like an intimate relationship, could have been a cheater, could have been a liar. Um, you know, that kind of energy. I don't feel like you guys are mending the connection with them. I think that you're, you're mending like healing yourself after you're dealing with this kind of energy because I feel like you were the stable one and then became unstable dealing with this person. But I think you're overcoming that. Let me get another one for mending. This feels weird. Maybe they don't want you to like move on. Maybe Feel like a part of them kind of wants to still be in your energy and you're like no i see you for what you are i see this for what it is like i'm out of here yeah that's exactly what it is you're like no thanks two of ones in the reverse like yeah this might be familiar but like i want out of this because it's not it's it's pissing me off it's making me angry that's the pressure in my back it's like repressed anger repressed truth like rep like i don't fuck with you kind of energy like low key, really. And I hate to say it like that, but I think this is you mending the energy with yourself, lover's energy. And it could be mending with other people. But again, this, this nine of wands energy does not feel stable for you guys in your life. And they're not. And then they're not. Ten of pentacles in the reverse with the three of cups in the reverse. So y'all, yeah, like I said, liars, cheaters, people that didn't want to help you build and grow, but wanted to like wanted you to build and grow and to take from you. Y'all were dealing with the taker, a taker, a taker, a taker, and you were happy to give, happy to give, happy to give, and you're not happy to give anymore. And I don't think this person is happy that you are not happy to give anymore, but who gives a shit? I mean, <laughs> this energy is not comfortable or signs. This is not a positive energy. This Knight of Wands in the reverse was never going to like 
commit to you, be real with you, be honest with you. Like they were a taker. They are a taker. You're seeing the takers in your life. And for some of you guys, this could be a like with that three of cups in the reverse, this could be a bunch of knight of wands in the reverse people it doesn't have to be one person i mean honestly there's a handful of people here this could be a this self-worth lesson that you've been learning or this um lesson of needing to be independent needing to be on your own needing to do things on your own needing to spend time alone for whatever reason like it's almost like getting away from people like people 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 just like everywhere like all up in your grill like wanting handout like you're recognizing who the takers are and you're like cutting that off or you're seeing that these people were takers if they're no longer in your life anymore and you're healing that over giving people pleasing kind of energy uh, within you. Time for a nap. Yeah, beautiful. Look at what we have over time for a nap. Calling out. Be wow. I can't wait to show you all this. Look at this calling out the seven of swords people in your life. It's in the reverse, which means the, the, how, how you say the jig is up motherfucker. I see you now seven of swords in the reverse, but look at this. You see the two foxes up here. What did I just say? The two foxes are up here. Look at this. Somebody that's like, yeah, I got you. No problem. We're besties to the end of time. I I love you to the end of time. We're going to get married. We're going to do all these things. Money, money, money. We're going to spend it. It's going to be great. We're going to buy a house, cars, clothes, like to, to until the end of time, like love of my life, whatever, whether it's friend, family, whatever, what have you. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Just to stab you in the back kind of energy. You're calling that out. Seven of swords in the reverse. Six of wands, which means you're moving into victory and success. Nine of wands, because you're closing that chapter. You're growing. You're evolving. This is evolution that is happening by calling the seven of um, swords out in your life, and you're moving into that six of pentacles energy. So balance, reciprocity, good people in your life, good people coming in. And again, I'm, I'm keeping this as your overall because the way that these came out, it was like earth signs are like putting an end to this nine of wands is like doing that. It's finally growing, involving from the lies, the deception, the pain, the betrayal that like people brought into your life. And I almost want to say empty promises or false promises or like fake ass forevers is what I'm hearing. Like take that how it resonates, but it's like, you're calling that out and oh my God, you're moving into alignment, happiness, joy. Like you're seeing, you're seeing the takers in your life and you're rectifying that shit, whether that's just healing that within you, uh, or whether you're actually kicking takers out of your life and you're, 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 what you're mending is the relationship with yourself because this nine of pentacles in the reverse, like I said, is codependent. Now you're mastering independence. This was scarcity. Now you're, you're, con now you're mastering content. Um, you know, before it was like lack, but now, right. All that five of pentacles energy, but now you're manifesting uh, or, or you're sitting in the energy of abundance. I have everything. I'm good. I'm straight, which then brings more of it because nine of pentacles is law of attraction, but in the reverse dealing with these takers, it was making you feel like you didn't have, like you weren't capable, like you weren't competent, like you couldn't make shit happen in your life because these people were around you you taking, 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 pulling at your energy, pulling at your money, pulling at your mental, pulling at your finances, pulling, 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 draining you, keeping you in this perpetual state of, of lack and, and loss and not having and not feeling content and always on edge of about physical stability, security, all of that is going away when you either A, recognize that the people that you were dealing with were doing this to you and now you can like get out of that energy because you're like, this ain't my energy. Wipe my hands clean of that, move into the next cycle. Lesson learned, wipe my hands clean of that, move into the next cycle. Or you're actually cutting out physical people in your life this week that are that way and you are D wiping your hands. Ooh, oh, I see you for who you are. I'm out of here. Wipe my hands clean of that. Move into the next thing. When you learn the lesson and or rid these people from your life, and when you see what was really going on, when you see what was really happening, deep knowing, it sets you, it, it resets your life in a way. Like not resetting your life as like starting from the ground up, you lost everything, all hope is gone, lost, whatever, but more of like resetting your life to like back to peace without all of the 
hullabaloo that was going on when you had all these takers in your life. Some of you guys are learning this week that it's better to be alone well, than to walk with people that are going the wrong direction. I think that was last week's messages or two weeks message, ago, two weeks ago message, whatever. So you guys, it could have been, I feel like the mental shit has been going on for a while. Overthinking. Who are these people? Do I cut them out? Who is this person? Who is the situation? Are they good for me? Are they not? You guys want to see the best in everyone, but people put a bad taste in your mouth and it makes you have to stop and think and go, who the fuck are you? Oh, you're a snake. You're a ratata. You're a fucking fox, huh? And it's like, oh, you're a liar. Oh, you're a cheater. Oh, you're a loser. Like, <laughs> you're a fucking snake. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. But um, yeah, you're closing that chapter. And with that, take a nap. You guys are going to be feeling better, sleeping better, like pressure weights off your chest, off your shoulders, gone, growth, evolution, and in a position to uh, really create some awesome things in your life. So fun, fun reading our signs might be a little tough, right? To have to really say peace out to some people, but is it really, is it really that tough when you see that they really weren't down for you, that they really didn't have your back, that they really weren't there for you, that they really didn't support you, didn't love you. They just wanted something from you. That's got to make it easier. I can imagine, right? I mean, it might be difficult, right? Let's keep it real. Like what you thought was real, maybe you're now seeing wasn't and that's fucked up, but better for you that you caught it now because now you can go and change the narrative. Uh, getting into fire signs, we're going to take a brief intermission. I'll be back in just a minute to get into fire energy. So talks amongst talks amongst yourselves or feel free to fast forward. I will put a timestamp below.
All right, guys. We're coming back with fire signs. So let's do it. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Aries, Leo, Sag. Aries. Oh, God damn. All right. All that glitters. This card is a beautiful card, but I just feel like I just never really get a good vibe off of it. Oh my God. It's a record. Um, so far, all signs, air, earth, and you now have this deep knowing card. But before we get to that, we're going to go ahead and read all that glitters for you guys. It was your first card out. It's kind of the theme of what I'm doing here today. I don't know why, but we're going to roll with it. So number 16, a one and six breaking down to a seven. Lots of seven energy here. You guys have three sevens. So that might be significant for you guys, but we'll first read all that glitters. And for you guys, that is number 16. So boom, all that glitters, um, essential meanings, a need to see beyond the superficial, the desire to don a mask or dress something up to disguise its true nature, trying to be something you're not, chasing after every sparkly new thing, and being mercurial. The oracle's message is it's only human to want to adorn oneself in trinkets and paint a pretty picture of oneself. It's natural to want to acquire the trappings of status or to deny them as a statement of rebellion. But if it sparkles, is it better? Whether it's a fast car, big house, or title or position, the stamp of authority, or the sparkling of diamonds, these icons let you know something about a person, place, or thing, or do they? The truth is that people seek to acquire things because of what they will do for them and how they symbolically will elevate them and make them feel more attractive. This card signals that it's time to see beyond the adornments and probe underneath the surface. Learn to recognize the mask people wear and the motives underlying them. Imagine that all the glitter is gone. Would you still desire that object or person? All's not what it cracks up to be, fire signs. <laughs> you might have someone on a pedestal, um, but I, this also kind of feels like um, I'm feeling this two ways. Get mad at whichever one you want, but we'll talk about it. 31, 3, and 4, breaking down to why. I mean, pfft, math. 31, 3, and 1, breaking down to a 4 with why. 43, 4, and 3, breaking down to a 7 with deep knowing. And then bottom of the deck, you have 2, 25, 2, and 5, breaking down to a 7, round and round. So round and round speaks to repeating a cycle. And this could be a cycle with a specific person in your life. Um, or this could be a cycle with that's like the same lesson or the same energy, but with different people, right? Because if you don't learn your lesson the first time around in a relationship or in a connection or in a certain way of living, being, doing, what have you, you will end up going through that same lesson or repeating that lesson um, in a different situation with a different person, whatever, what have you. And that seems to be what's going on here. Now, with all that glitters, I am feeling this two ways. I feel like either you have someone on a pedestal and you're about to find out that when that glitter is gone, that is not what you put on a pedestal. That is not who you signed up for or vice versa. Um, and or the other side to that is you put material things before like 
actual love and actual happiness and actual joy. And that is coming back to bite you in the ass or has come back to bite you in the ass or will come back to bite you in the ass. That's the energy. So some of y'all could be losing somebody in your life that really loved you or that you really loved or vice versa due to material issues, money, work, finance, career, the finer things, whatever, what have you. This feels like a loss of someone in your life due to financial reasons, uh, in, in imbalance of financial reasons. And that's exactly what it is. First card out is the nine of pentacles in the reverse. So issues with money. Um, others of you guys uh, are coming to a revelation about a pattern of behavior in your life when it comes to people, when it comes to material, when it comes to your relationships, uh, not just with people, but with money and the material world that have an imbalance that don't allow you to really enjoy both. It's almost like for you, you can't have one without the other, but you sacrifice one for the other, feeling like it will lead you to gain the other when it doesn't. It just it brings an energy of loss round and round is that cycle spirit has been trying to warn you about that but it's like you can't see it so over all that glitters you have that nine of pentacles in the reverse which i was just telling earth signs is a codependent energy that means i'm codependent on you or you're codependent on me for some physical financial type of reason like you guys could only be seeking out partners or relationship that have something that they could do for you financially and you're missing out on like real soulmates and like real love and like true companionship and when you go through life you realize that it isn't really about the physical shit it's about what's on the inside and as corny as that sounds what you guys will will need to learn in this situation is that until you feel whole and complete on the inside Inside, with inside of yourself, um, then everything outside of you won't be the way that you want it to be. And you'll always feel like you're missing out on something. So it's almost like get right within first, like get stable and secure within your energy first. And then when you're looking for love and partnership, you're looking for love and partnership on like some authentic shit. Like this is who I am. This is my life. Like you want to share it with me. You want to grow. You want to build like that kind of teammate energy. This feels one-sided. It feels selfish, whether this is somebody in your life, you or whatever the case is over. Why? I'm, this is too many. Sorry. My dog is playing with the squeaky toy. Um, and I don't have the heart to take it from him. Over why? Ten of wands and the six of wands. Yeah. Something that became too much of a burden that isn't working out. But I feel like it only became a burden because whatever this connection or these connections or this pattern of behavior when it comes to connections is built off of isn't authenticity. It's not authenticity. You're so fixated on the physical, financial, seven of pentacles. What can I gain from this? You or somebody else in your life, vice versa, right? If there's nothing I can gain from this, I got to like be out. But it's not even like that in a healthy way. It's like that in like an unhealthy way where it's like, if I'm not getting anything from this, if this person doesn't have money, if they can't take care of me, if they can't like, me, 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 <laughs> me, energy, then I can't like be with them, be around them. When you only go for the money, you bite yourself in the ass. When you only go for the physical, you bite yourself in the ass. You can have all the finer, finest things in life, the cars, the clothes, the shoes, the hose. But when all is said and done and you can't cuddle with that shit at night, hmm. Some of y'all could be losing somebody this week or they could be losing you because, again, just it's not the financial. Yeah, y'all could be dealing with the earth sign or you have earth in your or you have earth in your chart because the, the vibe is kind of similar here with the nine of pentacles. And now you have the five of pentacles in the reverse. It's like looking at the taking. It's like looking at the taking. It's codependent. It's codependent. Yeah, you want the Ten of Cups, which, but it came out in the reverse. It's like 
going for what is physical is not going to lead you to your happily ever after. If you have love, y'all really do have everything. Because if you have that, it's not to say you need to be in a relationship, but if you're looking for a relationship and you're basing it off of material, what can this person bring me, give to me, take care of me, whatever physical energy, if you're going into it like that, you're never going to have that love and happiness. But if the foundation 10 is built on love, is built on happiness, if the foundation is built on love and it's built on happiness, then you can build your way up to the 10 of pentacles together collectively. You have to have something to offer too, is what I want to say. Like you can't just be out here like they need to have, they need to have, they need to have. Like what do you have is really like the energy that's here. And again, this can be vice versa. So this is not your energy. Then this is somebody around you that is like behaving in this way towards you. But it's almost the energy of like, if you're looking for love, you got to be doing it in the emotional sense and not looking at it through the eyes of like codependent, like I need a roommate and I'm going to pretend like this person is like my lover, but really like they're a check, like a paycheck. Like, I don't know who the fuck this is for, but there is somebody either with you or in and around you that is behaving in this way and spirit is saying enough is enough. Like round and round, we got to get out of this cycle. Yep, two of wands in our verse with the queen of wands. Time to get back to you. Time to get back in, in, yes, in your confident energy. Yes, in your boundary energy. Yes, in all your luscious, beautiful, awesome queen of wands energy. But also like away from people that like diminish that or take that away from you or make you feel that you are not that or that you're not good enough as that without what you bring to the table is really how this is coming through. Like somebody here is not looking at somebody like through loving eyes. Somebody here is looking at somebody through like, what can you do for me? Like, what can you give to me physically, financially, a taker or vice versa, right? That's the energy or this is the way that you guys have been perceiving connections through, whether consciously or subconsciously, but it's never worked out. Ten of swords. But it has never worked out. It's always left you kind of the opposite of what you were striving for. So to me, this is like getting out of like connections that aren't based on like love. Or healing that part of you that was that entertained connections that were not truly based on love. This is like you evaluating why these relationships haven't worked out, whether this is somebody that you're currently dealing with or somebody that you, um, you know, somebody that you were dealing with or somebody that you are dealing with. For some of you guys, this is like a pattern of behavior. Like, almost like mom says, you know, marry rich, like, kind of shit, like, marry for money, like, type shit, like, don't do that. You will never be happy. You have everything in the world but happiness. And if you don't have happiness, what do you have? You know what I'm saying? Like, sure, you'll be taken care of, like, but you won't have, you'll fucking always be miserable. This is true. This is true. Jim Carrey said, uh, I wish everybody in the world could be rich and famous so that they would realize that it's not everything. And it isn't. It, it really, it really isn't. I mean, this, this is what you want, Ten of Cups. You're thinking, okay, I get it by looking for where Pentacle is at. Who can bring me the Pentacle? But when you take away the glitz, the glam, the shiny glitters of the Pentacle, what do you have? The Ten of Swords, the Ten of Wands. It's not sustainable. You cannot sustain a healthy, loving relationship connection off of what can you do for me? What can you bring to the table? Can you match my energy? Sure, but this is like codependent shit and spirit is saying really look at that, see that and move away from it. Y'all know something is not based on love here or wasn't in the past. It was based on what I can get from you. And it's healing that. Yep. Temperance. It's healing that so you can go about what you want and get it in the right way with the Ten of Pentacles. Love first and then everything else falls into place. Now, what I will say to this is that Ten of Pentacles, 
comes before um after that nine of pentacles which means you kind of have to get your shit together first before you can get to this 10 to share in that with other people but if you've been riding somebody else's money train it's time to get off of that or if you've been letting somebody else ride your money train it's time for them to get off of that and it's time for both of you uh, or you know if it's happening right now to go your separate ways get your own physical your physical security stability energy together and then we look for love in this capacity i have a ten of pentacles you have a ten of pentacles we're even equally yoked balanced harmony peace love there is no fights over money there is no fights over expectations there is no fights over what you can do for me and what you don't do for me. Like there's none of that. There's none of that. This is I have, you have, you're whole, I'm whole, we're equal. This is the life. This is the beauty. This is the love. This is everything that we have been wanting and we have been looking for. And that's how you get it, fire signs. That's how you get it. Something just feels weird here. I don't know. Something just feels weird. Like maybe you didn't mean for it to be like this. I don't know. Maybe this is the only way you know how to connect. Again, like the energy of like marry for money, marry for money. It's like looking for love out of like scarcity and lack. Like it's codependent. It's codependent. And I'm not saying fire signs, you're just some raggedy bum or the person that you're dealing with or have dealt with in the past is some raggedy bum that just don't have their own and like, you know what I'm saying? But it's also like, but it's also like, I don't know, there's something weird here, you guys. I just can't like, it's like escaping me. What? Yeah, it's like going out into the world full energy in the reverse in an energy that isn't balanced within the self, six of pentacles in the reverse. So then you start attracting people and situations who are also kind of out of balance. And so it you could be, if it's you, that's like go for the money, go for the physical, go for the what they can do for me. If it's you that's like that, you're going towards these people who are also kind of like half energy, kind of not in balance, doesn't really have a lot to offer doesn't really have anything to give right now because they're kind of on a needing to kind of go on a solo journey and kind of do their own thing so that they can bring their life into balance. And so you're attracting these people where you think they have their shit together and you think they have all this money and you think they have this, but really they don't. And so so they're out of balance and you're out of balance and these imbalances are like triggering each other and like causing issues and causing these fights over money, over finances, over what you can do for me, over expectations. And then when those expectations aren't getting met, the loving connection, right? All the glitters is now the 10 of wands where it's like burden, stress, blah, blah, blah. And it's because it wasn't built on the right foundation. You cannot be a half person out there looking for a hole. You will only get half of another person and together you won't make a hole. You'll make a really triggered half person triggered by another half person. So when you're not in alignment with yourself and true nine of pentacles, energy, secure, stable, confident, content, working on yourself, working on your shit, living your best life. You're never going to find somebody that is perfectly whole to be your other half. Does that make sense? Two halves don't make a whole. Two holes make a whole. Really? This feels like getting into relationships under the wrong pretenses. Again, codependency energies here subconscious or otherwise there's fear there's attaching here and there's somebody here this week that's reevaluating this and either you're walking away from someone this week someone may be walking away from you this week or there's just this revelation of like this isn't love <laughs> These relationships were not love. These are codependent connections. <laughs> and you're just kind of like going through the motions of figuring out why these relationships went the way they did, why they had transpired in the way that they have. And you're trying to understand them so you can get out of this cycle. 
and you will. You're going to come into balance and you're going to be moving um, on to bigger and better things. So kind of a weird energy for you, fire signs this week, kind of uncomfortable, uh, really having to see some truth of things here that maybe you were missing before, uh, but it will set you on the right track um, and up for better success in the future. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to water signs. Before I do, I'm going to have to take kind of an extended intermission. I don't really want to stop the video here. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, may probably be about like 10 minutes. I know that sounds fucking crazy. I am going to get into water signs, but I do have to take a brief intermission. I literally have to go handle something real quick. Um, and it can't wait. So I'm going to do a timestamp, of course, as always. I'm going to get out of fire signs. I'm going to put up water. Um, I'm going to put up water. And then when I get back, I'll set the uh, timestamp for water. So give me just a few and um, I, I shall be back. All right.
All right. Well, that was less time than I thought it was going to be. So that's good. Um, sorry, y'all. Everything has just been like, boom, 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 boom. Not a whole hell of a lot of time for things. You know what I'm saying? Um, if y'all vibe to the lo-fi while I was gone, shout out to you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> if you skipped uh, to the timestamp, you won't even... You won't even hear me talking right now um, because you're just going to be already clicked on the timestamp. Oh, my God. What is going on today, y'all? Everything is everything. My, oh my gosh. Can't even timestamp it yet because now I have to do damage control to the criminals. That <laughs> just knocked over my space here or the stuff in my space I should say all right we're all we're all good we are all good the price to pay for not like <laughs> for not being here y'all see why I've been MIA it's happening getting the vibes right <sighs> all of these lovely things but all right, let's get into perfect water signs. <laughs> All right, let's see. All right. All right. Everything is everything. Water signs. Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. Water signs. Cancer, Scorpio, and Pisces. There's kind of like an anxiousness. I don't know what this feeling is. Yeah, <laughs> not even fear. I don't even know like what you would even call this. That's like a like a calm anxiety. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. Like ready, but also like what the fuck is next? I don't know. We'll read it. One card, like the rest of them, come to the end. All good things. I want to say. All good things, all good things. But that's what makes it so nerve-wracking because you don't know. You're not sure. Is it all good things? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, your card is 30. The, the card that we're going to read is what I should say is 36, 3 and 6, breaking down to a 9. Come to the edge. Look at that. It's kind of like the full card, really. Kind of like the full card. So let me pull it up in the book. I'm kind of looking at these as like overall energy, honestly. 36. Okay. Come to the edge. So essential meanings courage, taking a leap of faith. See, I told you it was like the full card. Uh, courage, taking a leap of faith, overcoming fear, and accepting risk. The oracle message is facing the unknown is the only choice you really have right now if you want to progress. Bruh. We didn't even need cards or reading. We can just tell you, right? Type shit. But Facing the unknown is the only choice you really have right now if you want to progress. It's okay to be afraid. Now is the time to take a risk that is not calculated to feel the exhilaration as you ready yourself for a leap of faith. Spirit is present, so let go of fear. You are called to express your true self. Listen to your true heart and soul, not your head. Come to the edge and discover that you can fly. You must step into the unfamiliar so that you may find miracles. And you know what's so beautiful? about that message for you water signs is that look at what you're stepping into. 
<laughs> Number 26, two and six, breaking down to an eight with happy, happy, good times, a new life, waiting to be birthed, inner child healing, happiness in you that births this confidence poised person within you. Number 48, four and eight, breaking down to a 12, getting a lot of confidence on that card. It's almost like if you don't take this risk, if you don't take this leap, this certain level of confidence that you're needing to reach, that you're meant to reach so that you can reach other levels and do other things and hit these other pinnacles in your life, like can't happen. So it's almost like you have to do the thing that you don't want to do because it's been scary to like think of doing that because it's what's going to bring you to this happy, happy energy. It's going to the leap of faith is what is going to act as the catalyst to the confidence level going up. And that confidence level is what is needed to get to that happy, happy place that you're headed towards. This is a masculine energy that's coming through for you. Number one, oh, number one with Yang at the bottom and all of that fire energy that we were talking about coming back to you, um, you know, as, um, as Vesta comes out of retrograde in Gemini, all is going to be a, a, a really kind of like main underlying theme for you guys this week where it's like, I want to say out of the darkness and into the light because out of the darkness of your passive feminine self and into the light of the, the truest authentic part of you that you've yet to really express or uh, have been afraid of expressing for whatever reason. Um, confidence. I keep getting this energy of confidence, 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 like no more passive energy, really time to step into that masculine. The fool in tarot is Aries energy. It is the initiator. It is a masculine energy. It is going for it. It is taking that leap of faith. It is taking that risk. Poised is a fire energy and so is yang. Well, yang isn't necessarily a fire energy. Yang is a masculine energy, but masculine energy is fire energy and air energy. This is the best of both. There's a fireball with clouds behind it. That is fire. That is air. And so it's almost like... Like... You guys have been having dreams, visions, like seeing yourself living this life that feels familiar to you, but you've, but you've not lived it in this life is what I want to say. Almost like spirit has been giving you like a glimpse of what your future could look like if you just jumped off that cliff. And what that cliff is going to be symbolic to whatever it is, to whatever fear it words. That cliff is going to be symbolic to whatever fear has kind of been standing in your way between you and this happy, happy land that you've been walking into. But what I think is really interesting is if you look at this, one is jumping off of a cliff, like a dirty, dusty, dark, raggedy type cliff. And the other one on this poised energy is jumping onto a podium. There's lots of success, victory, recognition to be had here for you guys, whether that's recognition from your, you know, your angels and guides for how far you've come, for how far you've grown, um, or whether this is recognition from other people because you're going to be successful in your business and your work and career ventures, or, you know, whether this is recognition in the form of like blessings coming through for you for all of the hard work that you've done or all of the above. This is like taking control of your life and saying, I'm not no longer going to let these things that have been trying to stop me hold me down. In fact, I'm going to come to the edge and I'm going to jump off this shit and I'm going to hope for the best and the best is, is coming. No more contemplation, no more being in the energy of, um, stopping, thinking, overanalyzing, like, I almost want to say like, no, no more, no more being within. It's time to like, come without. Some of you guys are realizing this week that something you've invested a lot of your time and energy in uh, isn't working or did not work. I would argue that it did work. I would argue that what you invested is in a loss. What you invested 
in this situation that didn't give you the return that you were looking for did still give you something in the, in return. Skills, talents, knowledge, wisdom, confidence <laughs> led you straight to your happiness. Is that really a loss, you know? I think it's just hard to accept that as your reality because maybe you feel like you haven't reached that happy, happy place yet. But the opportunity to do that is there if you're willing to do what you need to do to jump off this cliff. Let's pull some tarot. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see what it is. Um, beautiful. See, I I kept feeling that energy of like recognition. It's success at creating a new version of your reality. Six of wands is a success energy, but it's also a birthing energy. What have you been working on? Ace of swords is the power to like see it through, to make it happen. This is your Phoenix rising from the ashes moment with this ace of wands, creativity, clarity, like passion, excitement, joy, like all the ideas are flowing to you. Some of you guys have been blocked from like ideas or like, like creativity or struggling with like tapping into your creativity in order to come up with ideas for something that you're, you're going to have the ideas. You're going to have the creativity. You're going to have everything you need to like go here. But I think people in situations may have been making you feel like you don't. People in situations making you feel like you don't. Something took away a lot of your power. Oh, I don't like this feeling. Hmm. I have chills. I've been like hypersensitive to energy. <laughs> so like maybe that's why I'm like all over the place because I'm just like feeling everything. Like I'm taking everything on. Oh, but this does not feel good. This feels like, like... I want to throw up. This feels like um like somebody taking your energy. There's a lot of taking energy going on. Earth signs had some taking energy. I feel like that was more of like physical health, physical wealth. Fire signs had a taking energy. I also feel like that was like more geared towards specifically like physical wealth, physical energy. Um, but you guys, it's like somebody's energy or their presence has been like robbing you of your mental peace, mental clarity. This could just be you also like getting too much in your head and like that being an issue, all the different thoughts, listening listening to the different thoughts instead of listening to yourself, which is why spirit is kind of saying like, get out of that. Some of you guys, this could be a relationship or a marriage that um, ended or is ending because it was pushing you uh, through a self-worth lesson, seeing lots of nine of pentacles here, but something had to not work out for a once in the reverse, something around your stability, your security, a job, a family situation, uh, a marriage, a relationship, something had to not work out in order for you to gain your wings is what I'm hearing. And I know that doesn't sound fun when things have to come to an end or when you feel like you've invested in something and, and nothing really happens with it or it doesn't really go in the direction you want it to. But you, this is about you this is about you gaining wings is what I'm hearing. Gaining wings, gaining wings. Oh, literally, literally. Look at this. Yeah, that's weird. No wings, wings. No wings, wings. Like, 
This is about you gaining wings to fly, to be your own person, to do your own thing, to live your own life. Maybe some of you guys were like super wrapped up in um, other people. So in relationships, being that, you know, over giver, people pleaser, like that kind of energy. If this is a work situation, it's like being under the the finger, the thumb, whatever of like somebody else, like company business when you're supposed to like really be on your own shit. Like nine of pentacles is independence. It's a solo energy. It's I don't work for anyone. I don't listen to anyone. I don't like, I'm on my way to empress status. Like I do my own thing here. Like, And not in a cocky way, but in a confident way, in a poised way, in a graceful way. Look at how poised and grateful that graceful this person on the Nine of Pentacles looks um, beautiful, graceful, elegant, poised, all of the things. And um, I feel like people, 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 I've been feeling this all day, like just people getting in the fucking way of shit. Like Five of Pentacles has been here. You guys have the Five of Swords. And this is like mental, 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 mental. I can't get out of this happen. Can't get out of that happen. It's also like a triggered energy too, where it's like, people make you triggered. Like you are easily triggered by people. Like it's that kind of energy. And that's telling you that either A, you're not around the right people or B, you're not confident and consent enough in yourself to not be triggered by other people's energy. Um, but this is all around like instability, like things not being stable, something that wasn't stable falling apart so that you can gain your wings, so that you can fly. You're meant to go down a completely different path than a lot of the people that you're around <laughs> or have been around throughout your life, honestly, which is the real reason why you weren't aligned to things working out with them, whether it's a relationship that you're currently in, a job that you're currently at, you know, people that you've dealt with in the past that you have a hard time getting out of your mind or whatever. It's almost like you all of this like spending time on, you know, being in the mind of like, oh, this didn't work. Damn, blah, 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 is like a waste of time because it was meant to happen because you're meant to go down a different path that's going to make you bigger, better, stronger than ever than this situation or these people would have ever allowed you to grow. The reality is, is that your reality can only expand to the belief system of the people that are around you. So even if you have big goals, big dreams, whatever, the people that are around you that don't have an effect on your reality because they're in your reality. So if you are dreaming big and you are tapped in and you are doing things, then these people will fall out of your reality. And for some of you, that's what happened and is happening. And this week you are take being encouraged to take that risk, take that leap and to transform, to get your wings. And along with that will come healing. And I cannot make this shit up. Five of Pentacles in the reverse. Lots of similarities within the collective this week. So y'all go check your other placements um, and listen to those other reads. But Five of Pentacles in the reverse. Who is taking my energy? Who doesn't have the same dreams that I have, the same beliefs that I have? Who isn't on the same page? Who is using me? Who is abusing me? It's like getting away from that. It's seeing the instability in something, seeing that something can't truly grow to fruition. So taking a risk to go somewhere where it will, somewhere where it can. The possibilities for you, water signs, are um, truly limitless. Truly. You have the seven of cups, so you can go any which way with this. You see the sea? It's parting for you. You tell it which direction you're going in and move forward. But, but staying on the edge as opposed to like really going in is something that needs to be um, addressed for the success of this really bright and positive future that you're moving into. Um, whatever you're afraid of this week, water signs, I would I would challenge you. I would encourage you. I would implore you 
to do that very thing, to face that fear this week. Because I do believe that you will feel, you will be, not feel, because it's going to be your entire experience. Um, you will be pe pleasantly surprised by the outcome. Don't wait anymore to go, to open up, to do, to be. Um, because I think you spent enough time on this and now it's time to really gain your rings. So that is what I have for you guys this week. Thank you so much for joining me. If you made it all the way to the end, shout out to you. Um, sorry about my energy and my spurts of scatteredness. I promise you I'm doing my best to ground and to be here, but my Aquarius rising seems to be getting the best of me, which is why I'm utilizing that energy uh, for the best behind the scenes during this time um, and still bringing you your favorite content that you love every week. So thank y'all for joining me. I appreciate you for being here. I hope you guys have an amazing week. And I, you guessed it, will talk to you soon.